Changes to Oakland speed limits, a walking miracle in Windermere, a Winter Garden landlord speaks out. And why did a post office in West Orange recently go through a name change? The date is September 2nd, 2021. We're going to go through these stories and more. Welcome to West Orange on the Go. My name is Austin Arthur, and this is where we do local news and comment. And when I say local news, I mean hyper-local. West Orange, this is your news. We begin in 10 seconds. You're listening to West Orange on the go. Brought to you by the West Orange Times and Observer. Hosted by Austin Arthur. West Orange on the go. Oakland considers lowering speed limits. The Oakland Police Department handled 56 traffic crashes in the last five years in an area bound by West Colonial to the south, Lake Apopka to the north, Machete Trail to the west, and the Winters Landing Drive to the east. And town officials say this is too many. Mayor Kathy Stark says, quote, I don't think there's anybody in Oakland who's going to argue against lowering speed limits in town, end quote. The town is holding two planned public meetings for residents to give input about their desire for the future character of Oakland Avenue and Tub Street. The first is at 6 p.m. Thursday, September 2nd, at the Oakland Meeting Hall. Now, if you're listening on the release date of this audio broadcast, then that is tonight. So if you haven't missed it, that is at 6 p.m. tonight. Full story by Amy Questenberry, and I encourage you to check it out, especially... If you are an Oakland resident, now the city of Winter Garden will review and vote on the 2021-2022 budget on September 15th and the 29th. Both meetings begin at 6.30 p.m. at City Hall and are open to the public. A walking miracle. Now, doctors are amazed. Windermere resident Frank Zodi is alive and continuing to thrive after surviving an aneurysm on August 16th. Frank Zodi doesn't typically get headaches. So when he had a severe one after his wife Tamara left the house on the morning of August 16th, he knew he needed to call for help. The phone call was to his wife and it ended up saving his life. The headache was actually a brain bleed. He made it to the hospital and through a battery of tests, doctors were able to locate and coil the aneurysm. Frank Zodi remained in the hospital for 12 days, a much shorter stay than doctors expected. We have a quote here from his wife, Tamara. He said he felt the pressure go up his spine and his head filled with fluid. Doctors and nurses all said that if he didn't call me to come and get him, and if he had just taken a pain reliever, he would not have survived. End quote. Now, Frank Zodi is 49 years old, and he is the owner of Zodi Woodwork and Design. Doctors state that it is a total miracle he is alive. Frank is quoted here in the article, quote, If I've been given a second chance, then I need to fight. Now, Frank's mother recently passed away, and he is still in the mourning process. Tamara, his wife, said, quote, When... I say his mom was in the room protecting him, making him strong. I believe it. Now, with a loss of income and medical bills coming, friends have started a GoFundMe page, and I encourage you to check that out. Quite the miracle. A brain bleed is a very serious thing. So a lesson could be maybe not to disregard unusual pains, but get it checked out. It could save your life. The pandemic has created a trickle-down effect for millions of people across the state. People have lost their jobs, their homes, businesses have folded, and many are struggling. But there's another segment of the population that has been affected and frequently is overlooked. The landlords. Prior to March 2020, Angie Coyrie and her husband Jason had 13 single-family rental properties, including two here in Winter Garden. In September 2020, an eviction moratorium was ordered to keep landlords from forcing out their tenants for non-payments. 
But what helped the tenants hurt the property owners. Currently, her tenants collectively are $64,000 behind in rent payments. She found herself in survival mode. As a pandemic continued, Koiri lost her job as a yoga instructor. And her husband, who works with Hilton Hotels in the banquet industry, was furloughed. When Orange County offered a rental assistance grant, Koiri and her property manager sent applications and information to all of her tenants. All of her tenants. And only one initially applied. The U.S. Supreme Court on August 26th voted against President Joe Biden's latest eviction moratorium extension. The decision blocks the CDC, that is the Centers for Disease Control, from enforcing the moratorium on evicting renters. However, Corey said she isn't celebrating just yet, as things still seem uncertain regarding a final outcome. Quote, The thing that shocks me the most is I thought I'd give myself enough padding. I never thought in my wildest dreams that the government would be literally tying my hands. End quote. She continued on, though, stating, We're average middle class people. We are not living lavish lifestyles. It's been tough. I have a heart. I'm not trying to put people out. We're just ordinary people trying to get by as well. The full story is exclusively at orangeobserver.com. Now, at the end of this broadcast, I am going to go over the reason why a post office, a federal post office in Windermere, recently went through a name change. You are going to want to hear this story. So stick with me. Now let me speak on a personal note. Last week I told you that next year we're going to be trying to get our daughter into a private school here in West Orange, that we're looking at various Christian private schools. A couple great in mind. One particularly we really loved. But we were still looking, we're looking. It turned out that We had to make the decision that we can't wait till next year. In the school system, your children, your grandchildren, they're with otherwise strangers for hours every day, Monday through Friday. If you suspect, if you suspect that they don't share the same values and principles that your family has, you need to consider taking your child elsewhere. If you can, it's not possible for everybody. Unfortunately, it's not an option for everybody. But if you're blessed to have the option, you need to pay attention. That is why we decided to enroll our child to put an application in to the Foundation Academy. Now, they are the sponsor of this episode. But that is not why we chose them. We chose them because they share the same values and principles that my family has. Now, they were founded in 1958. They've been doing this a long time. They comprise their education with faith, Of course, academics, fine arts, and athletics. They're renowned in our community. So I'm not sure if my daughter will be going to that school, but we have put in an application. Foundation Academy, where character matters. And now for our sports high five this week. One. Horizon High School celebrated its first varsity game last week when the girls' volleyball team made its debut. The Hawks defeated the Coey in three straight sets to deliver the school's first sports victory. Two, the first Academy alum, Tiana Daniels, was honored during halftime of their football game against West Oaks Academy. Daniels won a silver medal as part of the USA's women's 4x100 meter relay at the Tokyo Olympics. The TFA Royals defeated the Flames 42-12. Three, 
Horizon and Lake Buena Vista high schools made their varsity debuts in football last week. The Horizon Hawks lost to Freedom 42-6, and the Lake Buena Vista Vipers lost to Windermere at home 48-0. Four, Foundation Academy started a new era in Lions football with a 27-0 thrashing of Cambridge High School. The win is Andre Walker's first victory as head coach after taking over Brad Lord. Quarterback Greg Jones threw for 165 yards and three touchdowns, while Brian Thomas led the defense with three sacks. The defense also had three interceptions. Five. Friday Night Lights continued September 3rd with some big early season matchups. West Orange travels to Apopka. Windermere Prep will face off their first academy, and Ocoee will take on Wakaiva. In addition, Dr. Phillips will play its first home game against Timber Creek. The Panthers are looking to get back in the win column after losing to Jones at Camping World Stadium last Friday. Final story. The town of Windermere hosted a special ceremony last Sunday which renamed the post office in Winnemere on Conroy and Winnemere Road. Now, why would they do this? This is a big deal. A federal building has been renamed in Windermere. Now, for those of you who don't know, to get a federal building, to get a name change on a federal building, that's an act of Congress, not Florida Congress. The United States Congress, it goes through the House, it goes through the Senate. So why did they do this? Well, here's the backstory. On March 22nd, 2014, Winnemere police officer Robert German, known as Officer Robbie by many, was responding to suspicious activity at the southeast corner of Horizon Circle in Conroy Windermere Road near a federal post office. Not many details surrounding the incident are well known. But what is known is that just moments after Officer German arrived to the scene, he was shot and instantly killed. The two assailants then shot and killed themselves moments later. Officer Robbie graduated from Lake Mary High School in Seminole State College Law Enforcement Academy. He was on the job for five years, and he was 31 years old. Now, during this time, West Orange County, within the course of two months, suffered two tragedies of fallen officers. In February of that year, Orange County Deputy Sheriff Jonathan Scott Pine was gunned down. A community park in Windermere now bears his name in honor of his service, leading up to the ultimate sacrifice a person can give to others while on this earth. Now, Officer German's murder marked the very first time in history of the town of Windermere that an officer was killed on duty, a history that began some 100 years ago. That federal post office that bore witness to the unprovoked murder of Officer German was renamed this week. In a bill co-signed by every single member of the Florida Congressional Delegation, the rare renaming of a federal post office occurred this past Sunday. From this time forward, to be known as the Officer Robert German Post Office Building. West Orange These are heroes. And in the case of Officer German, and in the case of Officer Pine, these are heroes who gave it all. They gave it all, protecting us. When you see one of our men or women in blue this weekend, please stop. Thank them. Try to understand the risk they take every day serving us. That's who we should be in West Orange. 
I contend that's who we are in West Orange. And now, I want to thank you for taking the time to walk through this week's hyper-local news with me. Together we are more informed. But I want to hear your feedback, questions, and ideas. Message me by visiting westorangeonthego.com. Westorangeonthego.com. This has been Austin Arthur with the West Orange Times and Observer. And until next week, have a happy and blessed weekend. West Orange on the Go is brought to you by the West Orange Times and Observer. Hosted by Austin Arthur. West Orange on the Go.